the, prior to the share group, what did you do for a living? What haven't I done for a living? <laughs> <laughs> like life takes you on an incredible journey, one that you don't even anticipate. So um, I actually majored in fashion. I went, ended up going to FIT. Uh, believe it or not, at the time, I enjoyed art history the most. I thought this was it for me. But for some reason, because I so enjoyed sketching, because again, that you're creating an image. You're able to do something you know, uh, with what you're given. Um, and I sketched and I drew things. And, um, you know, when my daughter was born, I found myself in four walls going crazy. It was winter time. And I started, you know, got my pencil out and I started to, to sketch again. And in those few moments in between burping and feeding and changing and bathing uh, the child, the baby, you know, I had those few moments where I was supposed to be sleeping, but I was so overwhelmed with this miracle we call life that I couldn't sleep and I would find myself sketching. And interestingly enough, something very personal, um, like sketching my child in front of me, became something different as time went on and I began to sketch handbags. And the reason for that is because I've always felt that a handbag is like, um, for a woman, a handbag for a woman is equivalent to uh, a beautiful watch for men. Yep. And that when you walk into a room, in that moment, you can be anything you want to be. Nobody knows. You lead with that watch. Uh, and you, if you're a woman, you lead with, lead with your handbag. It's a great talisman. And uh, a chaperone, if you will. So a lot of times you see women walking in with their airmay bags. And it's a certain image they want to portray. Um, and whatever high they get from that is their business. But I also understood the power of a handbag. Um, and I wanted to create something luxurious, a luxury rather would be the proper word to use um, and something really cool. And so I started sketching handbags and just drew something, um, but it was important for me to connect it to the ch childbirth, to my daughter, her name's Eliana. And so she's just such a firecracker, always had been, always had a personality that was bigger than life. And I wanted to connect with her and so I created this logo for us, um, a hand-drawn hand logo, uh, had gone to my friend's um, very talented husband who helped create the actual logo, uh, which was uh, connecting my initial A with my daughter's initials on both sides of my name, E, and giving it a face of a panther. Very difficult to um, for you probably to comprehend, but enough to say that uh, it was hand carved gold, uh, uh, dipped in gold, um, gold plated, obviously. And uh, then I created, uh, obviously, that logo that I could use as this closure on my bags, um, just like Chanel has, just like Calvali or any other brand, major brand. And so that was my identity. And that was about my connection to my daughter. And I decided I wanted to make one, that I just wanted to actually physically make it come to life. And so through a process of finding the right people, I created a bag uh, for my mother, then for my sister. And then my friends started asking me to help create a bag for them. And then I started naming these bags after my friends that inspired me. And before you knew it, I was invited to come and um, participate at Henry Bandel's, uh, they have something called an open sea event. And they loved my stuff and invited me to come back and sell my merchandise in their store. And that's how it all began. Um, 
at some point, uh, as a handbag designer, I was very lucky and fortunate to have celebrities carry my pieces to the red carpet events, well-known events, talked about events, philanthropic events, and I was invited to some of these events. And therefore, at some point, having met uh, people uh, and nurtured and cultivated relationships, I ran across uh, someone I was introduced to. He was a publisher for Incel Magazine at the time. And he was so um, interested in seeing how my mind works because of the conversations we've had um, that he came up with a few ideas that I could probably take and kind of run with just to see, just to see how my mind works and liked what I came up with. And before mm -hmm. you knew it, I was now working at InStyle Magazine. So they brought me on a style correspondent, which meant um, I put on events for them, whether it was in-store branding events or um, larger events, private events. Um, I also, in return, I was invited to women empowerment events. And during one of those uh, events, I um, came across uh, a group of women uh, talking, sharing, and I found it very interesting. It was very comforting. It was very interesting. I, I realized early on, I mentioned this to you before, I keep saying this during, my, during every interview I've ever had, that I do take a contrarian view when it comes to segregation. Yes. So I often thought, well, if I was to ever do something like this, not that I was planning to do anything like that, uh, that I would definitely do it differently. And so it just happened. A friend asked me to support him by bringing my friends to a winery. I got a bunch of my girlfriends together. My girlfriends brought their friends. We got on a bus, beautiful luxury bus, but we did not anticipate how long it was going to take us to get to the actual location. And we were on the bus for about three hours, losing our minds completely. Can you imagine three hours? <laughs> um, and, but basically what happened as a result of being stuck in this box was that women started opening up to one another. And in doing so, I realized that the fascinating aspect or the, the part about women opening up is that they felt safe. It, it just felt safe they felt comfortable, maybe being in that space for so long, getting to know one another. We were a limited group of 20 people. It's a lot, but it's also not too many. And um, in that moment, I, I understood that if women felt safe and comfortable, they would open up about things that they wouldn't even ordinarily feel comfortable opening up in the society that we live in, depending on the issues. Um, when we got to the winery, and I've shared with you some of the details about the, the, the stories that women had shared that were just mind blowing. And when we got to the winery, uh, we just started having fun, uh, climbing into those barrels, um, crushing those um, grapes, which we didn't realize were frozen. Uh, by the time we stopped laughing uh, our butts off, we decided to talk a bit more. And at that point, the more we spoke, the more we realized how connected we were, no matter how different, no matter what backgrounds, no matter what the agenda may have been, we as women have the same exact goals and aspirations. I mean, obviously, professionally speaking, personally speaking, we all strive for different things, but as women, as mothers, as wives, as daughters, as sisters, we all have same aspirations, same desires, same needs. And uh, it became a very magical time for us in that moment. And as I shared with you before, when I got home, I had so many messages from these incredible women asking me when we are doing this again. Thus, this was the initial um, event that was a thrust for us in a sense that so is that the birth of SHARE? 
right there, that bus ride going up to the winery, crushing ga- grapes, laughing your butts off with fellow women and just hearing their stories. Is this where the idea was sparked? Initially, yes. Well, no, that's where it was. That's where we birthed it. But I had no desire to do anything about it. It was just a moment shared. But it is only when I had gotten home and the phone calls started coming in and the messages and uh, the next day as well about when we're going to do this again, I realized that we need to do this again, that the need was there. And the second time we did it, it was even more magical, but in a very different way. We've we've done it very differently. So I realized, as I mentioned that to you before as well, having done events, I realized that because we get so inundated in our everyday lives, it's very hard for us to make it to whatever we are invited to. But if it's intriguing enough, if it's exciting enough, if it's fun, if it's um, moving, if it's if it involves a celebrity, if you if people are engaged, they will show up. And so, yes, we are very much events based because I always want to make sure there's something that I can uh, bring to this or these events uh, that will excite women and want uh, to have them want to show up. It's not always easy, but there's always enough to stimulate um, the minds and um, to lure them back in. And once they're lured back in, magic happens yet again. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.